Welcome to St. Martha Parish. Today we come together to celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We wish to extend a warm greeting to our visitors, those who are joining us via broadcast, and those who have been away from the church for a while. We are glad that you are with us this evening. We hear of many miracles in the Bible, and today we hear of two, God coming to Elijah in the quiet and Jesus walking on water and calling Peter to join him. There are times in our lives when we look around and think miracles are a thing of the past, but that is not so. Miracles happen every day, but it is up to us to notice them. Have we taken the time to sit back and observe the miracles happening around us lately? The special intention for this Mass is for Tricia Berger. Our presider is Father Mike, assisted by Deacon John. Our processional hymn, Look to Your Covenant, O Lord, can be found on the front of your worship aid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Parish life sometimes is transitions. Um, yesterday we had, Friday we had the uh, beautiful funeral for Victor Rose, a long time parishioner, teacher, um, anybody who may have had a ball in his hand a few decades back, referee, very memorable. I only stole a few of his uh, ways of doing it. Um, Saturday, we've got the beautiful wedding we had today. Um, Susanna Lesniak, Michael Sepulveda, um, two beautiful young people becoming a family and coming as two individuals to our parish as, as a family in our parish. A uh, wonderful young couple. And then we've got a hole in the back of the church off the center aisle, slightly to the side, uh, where two of our friends are still standing back there, but uh, Joanne Yerger uh, has passed away this week. We have a funeral at 11 o'clock on Monday. She was part of our uh, back row on this side, uh, anchoring the church. Um, life is coming and life is going all the time. We give glory and thanks for those who are among us and those who are coming to us. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, 
You have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all. God bless it forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O you of little faith, why do you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, for that beautiful first reading from 1 Kings, If you happen to be in over on MAC Street around St. John's Student Center on July 27th, 
35 years ago, and if you happened that afternoon to go into the church, you would have heard that reading as the first reading at the wedding of Linda and me. Um, it's, a, it's a piece that carries a lot of meaning. But still we wonder, how is it that we find Elijah, the great and mighty prophet, who fears no man, hiding in a cave? Well, if we go back one chapter in 1 Kings, we have that bit of unpleasantness that happened um, on Mount Carmel, uh, where there was a little bit of a demonstration of power at the conclusion of which Elijah directed the slaughter of the 450 prophets of the false god of Baal. Uh, he had shown the emptiness of their pleas to a, a god that doesn't exist. And the real god, the god of heaven and earth, had shown his power. Now it may be that Elijah feared no man, but he had a little different outlook on Jezebel, um, the ruler there. Uh, after the 450 prophets of Baal were sent to their reward, she swore her vengeance. She promised to do to Elijah precisely what had happened to them. And she had a history of making good on her threats. So Elijah ran away. He got as far as the desert, kind of ran out of steam, fell asleep under a broom tree. An angel came and fed him, had a little something in his stomach. She was able to get up and continue on, we're told, for 40 days and 40 nights. He reaches the holy mountain of Mount Horeb, the mountain of God, where Moses received the Ten Commandments. It's at the far southern end of modern day Israel. He's far, far away from Jezebel, but he still thinks it's a pretty good idea to hide in a cave. And that's where we have this beautiful scene. He's waiting for the Lord. The Lord is not in the strong and heavy wind that is rending the mountains and crushing rocks. The Lord's not in that wind. The Lord's not in the earthquake. The Lord's not in fire. He recognizes the Lord in the tiny whispering sound. In our gospel, the Lord comes again in the peace. This is after the feeding of the 5,000. He's alone, up a mountain, praying. He's an island of peace. But his disciples are out on the water, and they're out there without him. And so there's, there's chaos out there. The boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. He comes to them in the fourth watch, which in the Roman telling is the hours before dawn. They're panicked. They think he's a ghost. They're terrified. They cry out in fear. And then he gets in the boat. And then everything's okay. He sits down in the boat. The storm stops. The disciples know it's he. Know it's he. There's peace. The Lord brings his peace in this way, in this quiet, when we're with him. We go back down to the cave. 
Down there, the Lord, after this scene, he comes. He wants to know, why are you hiding in a cave? Elijah says, well, Jezebel's after me. The Lord listens to this. But Elijah's not called to hide in a cave. He's not hide, called to be at the wrong end of Israel. So the Lord settles him down, sends him back up to the north, up toward Damascus. Because Elijah still has more to do. He has to prophesy, he has to tell the truth. In time, he has to anoint his successor, Elisha. With the boat, the storm, the wind, the fear, it's all over. It's all calm when the Lord comes. It's the same way in our lives. We run from the Lord, there's trouble. We're away from the Lord, there's trouble. When stress is in our lives, and the walls are starting to close in on us, it's a great time to offer just the Jesus prayer. Exhale and say the name of Jesus. You inhale, say the name of Jesus. If your heart is racing, just Jesus, Jesus. Jesus brings us back to him. Doesn't mean the problem's gone away, but it means we can begin to deal with it. And we can be that peace, that calm for other people as well. If someone needs to talk, we can be the ones who listen. When they need to vent, we can be the ones who nod our heads. When they need to cry, we can be the one with a hand on the shoulder. And remember what the Gospels say about the Spirit giving us a word to say. That's real. Come Holy Spirit. When we are with Christ as we should be, it's not just priests and deacons and religious, it's everyone. If we're with Christ, then sometimes when someone needs a word, we really will hear something coming out of our mouth that's pretty good that we've never heard before. We hear it as we're saying it. hiding in that cave, Mount Horeb, out on the boat on the Sea of Galilee being tossed about. There's fear, there's chaos, there's storm. So many of our brothers and sisters live all the time in that fear and chaos because they don't know the Lord. A few have rejected him, but in our world, more and more, they don't even know him. Nobody ever told them about Jesus. They're not deciding to be apart from the Lord. They don't know who the Lord is. All this evangelization stuff we talk about. All it is is just making that introduction. I got someone I'd like you to meet. May God bless you. Stay here. Let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not man, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to the Lord and share our prayers. For church and lay leaders, that their lives and work will continue to exemplify the teachings of Christ and his church, we pray to the Lord. For civic leaders, that the Lord will infuse in them a spirit of selflessness, allowing them to govern justly and fairly, serving God's people rather than their own interests, we pray to the Lord. For those in the world affected by the coronavirus in some form, especially the ill and those who have lost employment, may they always turn to the Lord in all circumstances and trust in his will and unfailing help. We pray to the Lord. For the reopening of St. Martha's School, religious education, and youth group, that the Lord will grant wisdom, health, and joy as we prepare to resume these vital ministries, we pray to the Lord. For those in our parish who are suffering from illness of body, mind, or spirit, especially Don Allen, that the Lord will grant them consolation, strength, and healing from their afflictions, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died in the hope of the resurrection of Christ, especially the holy souls in purgatory, and Vic de Rose, Edward Steins, Tony Valdez, Joanne Smith, and Joanne Yerger, that one day they may see the Lord face to face in the eternal gates of heaven, we pray to the Lord. For all the intentions of all our parishioners, those who are watching our broadcast, those who have asked us for prayers, and those for whom we have promised to pray, the intentions we hold within our hearts, and those we offer up now in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, these and all the prayers we hold in our hearts, we ask you to grant according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Our offertory land is, O oh God, our help in ages past.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands and the praise of your Lord in his name for our good and good of God's holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. By the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, 
one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Martha and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Earl, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Those who are perhaps visiting this afternoon, um, different parishes do communion in different ways during COVID. Here at St. Martha, we will, uh, Deacon John and I will come to you. We'll start in the center aisle and work our way out. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I'm not worthy of you. You should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and the soul shall be born.
spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and that I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. A diocesan service of appeal, DSA. Um, we have made our goal. Um, certainly on behalf of the bishop, but um, for myself as well. Um, thank you so much for that generosity. Um, the work of educating seminarians, the work of extending Christ's hand to the poor throughout our diocese is vital work. It can't be done by any one parish. And uh, as has, as far as I know, always been the case from the first year of this parish, decades ago, uh, St. Martha has met its DSA goal and uh, has again uh, carried its fair share and more in accomplishing the works of the diocese. So thank you for that. Um, the Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you.